before I begin, I should <clears throat> like to extend my condolences to Blanche, who looked after Bob so sweetly and for so long, uh, and Bob's children, Susan, uh, Stephen, Roslyn, and their children, who went on the, the long ride, sometimes the crazy ride, but the high ride, as I do Blanche's son, Louis. Um, when Bob invited me over to see him the better part of a year ago, uh, he and I were again joining the circle on the great friendship and partnership that drove the longest reform period in the country's history. Eight and a half years we were together, and with a great cabinet, we were able to give the country what it formerly never had, at least not since the war. Policy creativity, coherence and continuity. And as it turned out, not just for eight years, or eight and a half years, but for 13 years. <clears throat> At the core of it, Bob and I shared one primary idea, that Australia's creativity had been locked down by a stultifyingly paternal policy regime. The idea that the government knew best and that Australia was best protected and nurtured as a closed economy behind policy barbed wire, a framework that both the Labor Party and the Coalition then heavily subscribed to. <clears throat> Bob and I had clear ideas as to how each of us kind of independently arrived at the same conclusion and as to why Australia had operated suboptimally and for so long and broadly what had to happen to change it. But we also knew that to change it required wholesale policy reform on a scale the country and the Labor Party had never experienced. We knew we were in for it. And so did those senior cabinet colleagues who shared our view. We knew that none of the factions of the Labor Party would embrace so great a philosophical shift without a lot of persuasion and a lot of heft. <clears throat> it was this, qu this quest that was central to my eight and a half years partnership with Bob, the long and weary externalisation of the country, binding up sections of society as the changes bore their fruit and inevitably their cost. Eight budgets and six major economic reform statements, the equivalent of more than 14 normal budgets, along with standout singular reforms put in place along the way was a major undertaking. Through this great body of work, Bob and our Cabinet colleagues remained focused on the target. And the target was the nirvana of an open, creative and free society with enhanced opportunities for all. It was a huge agenda and moving on a very broad front. Bob was a great chair of a very creative and independent Cabinet. Contestability was its hallmark. Loyalty and commitment was its binding strength. The quality Bob brought to the Prime Ministership was an open mind, regard for policy creativity and a commitment to reform in areas central to Australia's economy, its society and place in the world. Areas long neglected and passed over by a succession of governments broadly since the Second World War. The shape and direction of the government came about with Bob setting the overall direction, balancing off the competing policy demands, giving the whole a recognisable and compelling coherence. He presided over the cabinet in a manner where all matters were generally contested, but where importantly, he allowed ministers to prioritise their issues and proselytise for them in public. He led a very can-do collegiate group. Of course, in the perpetual contest for ideas, egos inevitably clash. Bob and I would have private skirmishes over this policy or that, even criticise one another to immediate staff, often heavy criticisms. <laughs> but by instinct and a very large dollop of friendship, 
we always re remained welded to the same objective, a point even the closest of our staff sometimes fail to comprehend. I'm not sure they knew how stuck together we were. Through the ups and downs, each of us knew the other would remain faithful to the obsession. In the end, it was trust that held Bob and me together. I knew he would never, he knew I would never leave a landmine in some budget or economic statement to explode in his face, as I knew when push came to shove, he would not rat on the big ones, on the big policy changes. And we both loved the game of political dodgems, off with a spurt, banging our way around the course, often trying to sell the near impossible. Of course, we were we're sometimes wary of particular dodgems, but always exhilarated by the wild ride that generally followed. The thing about truly big confidence plays is that there's no substitute for the psychological reward, the bounty of major policy achievement. We truly relish those achievements, often celebrating them with family dinners at the lodge. Much of the very late focus on my relationship with Bob was of course on the termination of cooperation between us and his displacement by me as leader. But any cursory observation of those events generally fails to comprehend the very high level of friendship and cooperation between us for those eight and a half years, a long time in so hot a policy hothouse. And in policy terms, it lasted right to the end. In the event between us, Bob and I won five elections successively, not far short of four American presidential terms in a row. <laughs> Underlying the fact that Bob asked me to speak at this memorial was his recognition that our control over the 1993-96 parliament broadened Labor's policy frontier, well annealing the policy achievements he believed the country sorely needed and which bookended the policy framework begun during his own period of office. And I think I can say the template which we and our remarkable cabinet colleagues set into place in those 13 years has provided the foundations for Australia's burgeoning growth and wealth in a fundamental sense, really ever since. People seek leadership in political life for all manner of reasons. We'll never know what particular mix of influence propelled Bob Hawke or whether what Immanuel Kant called the inner command the commitment to more exalted objectives primarily drove him. Certainly that higher calling rang loudly in his head. None of us could be on the stage for long. Invariably, most of us get carried out. But what matters is the value of the legacy, its quality and its endurance. On both counts, Bob Hawke well earned five star rank and 24 carat stars at that. Thank you.